Hey guys, John V from Phone Arena here. You're watching our video review of the HTC Desire 820. Early in the year, HTC introduced to us the Desire 816, which proved to be a pretty formidable mid-ranger. But now we have the Desire 820, and it is more of a follow-up instead of being a true successor, just because it sports similar specs, but it is absolutely noteworthy for the type of processor it's packing under the hood. It's an octa-core 64-bit based Snapdragon processor, which hopefully should usher in a new age for HTC. So its processor might be the most notable part about the handset, but we actually find the design to be equally as compelling. Now it is a plastic constructed device and follows the same design language as the Desire 816 before it. But the design has been evolved and it comes out pretty nice. The overall package for a phablet is pretty amazing. It's lightweight, it's slim, and it's pretty solid with its construction. And we really dig the accent that HTC has done. Now our particular unit has this blue on white contrast and definitely stands out and you could even see in the back here around the camera lens and it's by far a pretty impressive looking thing. This actually has the same screen as the Desire 816 before it, so it has similar qualities. So same color reproduction, color temperature, uh, size, and resolution. It's a 5.5 inch 720p LCD panel, but luckily it sees some improvements in the form of a slightly stronger brightness output, so it's more visible outdoors, and you have also a better gamma value this time around. Overall though, it's not the sharpest or the most detailed, but it's still effective enough for most things. It's running a very familiar experience that we're all fond of by now. It's Sense 6.0, so nothing really new over other HTC phones. So you have still some of those core HTC experiences like Blink Feed that's intact, gives you a nice social networking aggregation tool but it doesn't have the same motion launch gestures that we've seen already in previous HTC devices. Now, it's still a nice modern looking UI, but we're really hoping to get Lollipop into this, you know, at some point in the future, you know, closer than later. At the same time though, when it comes to some of the software features, you know, it's not really heavy with that, which is great, but at the same time for its sheer size and being a phablet, it doesn't really have a ton of optimized features that make good use of the screen. So out of everything, the Desire 820 is arguably most notable for the processor that's under the hood. It's a Qualcomm 64-bit based octa-core chipset, the Snapdragon 615. It's coupled with 2 GB of RAM and the Adreno 405 GPU. Now, it's really nice that it finally jumps into that 64-bit base architecture, but honestly, when we look at the core performance, opening up applications, navigating through the UI, it doesn't really distance itself from other devices like the M8 or or any of the other mid-range devices we've seen from HTC's camp. And honestly, it's the same. But you do see a stronger gaming performance with the handset. But the thing that we're looking forward to is just the introduction of Lollipop, which should hopefully manifest its true potential. Seeing that the Desire 820 is classified as a phablet, it's a great multimedia consumptive device. So with its dual front firing speakers, and when you look at the music player, same exact sense music player that we're familiar with by now. But with those dual speakers, they really help to project audio towards us. So even though its uh, output is a little bit shy of 70 decibels, it still delivers a pretty, a pretty strong package with a deep tone and really resonates in small rooms. At the same time, they really work well with things like watching videos just because again, the audio projects towards us. So it's really fitting for the experience and we really can't complain about this aspect of the phone. It might not be on the priority list for many people, but the Desire 820 is also unique for being a dual SIM device. So you could pop in two SIMs and have two phone numbers. We gotta hand it to HTC, they're doing a better job of outfitting their devices with some pretty good cameras and the Desire 820 is a result of that. Now it has the same 13 megapixel camera as the Desire 816 before it, so it takes some really nice looking photos in all sorts of conditions. So outdoors where there's a light of sun, you get the best results of course, strong details, you have a sharp look and on top of that natural exposure. Under low light you see that dip in quality but it's not that bad, you generally get, you know, 
softer looking details, but at least the digital noise has been reduced. It's not really too prominent. Now, we're really impressed too with the front facing camera. It takes some really nice selfies. It's an eight megapixel one, which is a step up from the five megapixel camera of the Desire 816. And unlike some other phones, which produce grainy looking selfies, this one here, you get a good amount of detail. Unfortunately though, it's not that great when it comes to 1080p video recording. It's just very light on the details and it kind of looks more like 720p. And finally, it's audio recording is a little bit on the light side. It's battery life too also borders that average category. It's actually stuffed with the same capacity as the Desire 816 before it. So that's a 2600 milliamp hour one. And with this, we're able to power through a single day with normal usage, which is pretty average. And in our battery benchmark test, it somehow manages to turn out a little bit more juice. We, it achieves a mark of six hours and 49 minutes, which is longer than the Desire's 816. I gotta say, the HTC Desire 820 is a great mid-range device. Just like the Desire 816 before it, you get a pretty good package in what you're paying for. Now, if you look online, you could probably pick it up for around the $475 mark. And what you get with that is a pretty attractive phone that has a very different looking design, especially one that's all plastic. You have a dual SIM functionality, and it's noteworthy for having that octa-core 64-bit base Snapdragon under the hood, which hopefully will really show its true performance once it gets Android 5.0 Lollipop. It's a great phone if you're not looking for a high-end device and you want a pretty new mid-ranger. If not, there are several options, but you can't go wrong with this one either. So if you guys want to learn more about this handset, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. John V, thanks for watching.